Hi, folks. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Let's bring some light airiness back to the, the room that NECC sits in. Uh, welcome to twitch.tv slash NECC underscore esports. I am joined by this lovely snowy um, situation here in the form of Lars Newt. Uh, he will be joining us momentarily. We had a bit of a scheduling snafu, so we will get him in um but hi you got to deal with me for a little bit um i'm lychee and uh we are bringing this next matchup for the necc championships uh to you solo for the time being uh ladies and gentlemen i don't think this matchup could be more hotly contested we have uh it's an east champions matchup by the way it's durham and St. Clair. Um, it's going to be ridiculous. The quarterfinals, both of these teams got a bye, so they went straight into the semifinals. Durham swept Nichols, the fourth seed, 3-0. St. Clair swept Potomac State, 3-0, the third seed. Um, so... They went one and one on each other, Durham and St. Clair, in the season. I don't know, and and this is such a cliche thing to say because it it's so easy as casters to to get hung up on like, oh, it's going to be a close matchup, ba ba ba. Like, I genuinely believe this is about to be one of the closest matches that I have ever witnessed, that I have ever screamed over the top of to your probably displeasure um and that probably one of the closest that any of you fine folks have have witnessed either so um as we sit here uh waiting to get the teams onto the field and hopefully my co-caster um sooner or later but i it's fine because i've i've solo casted before we will power through ladies and gentlemen we will power through uh let's go over the rosters a little bit um for saint Clair, they have kamal endeavor and gorashi um, making their appearances for St. Clair. No substitutes. Um, interesting situation. Typically, you would, well, I mean, maybe I would expect, not necessarily anybody else, but I would expect a team that is this good um, to have some kind of a backup option in case something doesn't work out. But clearly, these three players have been totally fine. Um, Durham, on the other hand, as full of a roster as you could possibly get. Six players on Durham. Drew's Clues, Vitaly, Volts, Wildfire, Brooks, and Welks. Um, we just have yet to see who is going to start out of this Durham roster. I would imagine um, Vitaly will be one of them um, just because 
he's so dang good. Actually, I think I've got some some real time highlighting of, <laughs> of Excel spreadsheets in the background. Drew's clues, Vitaly and Volts, I do believe, will be the starting roster for Durham. Um, Vitaly, I have actually gotten the pleasure of casting for and casting with. Um, in case you guys weren't aware, Vitaly also works with me over at minor league esports. We do the, uh, South American grand series, the, the RLCS level broadcast over there as well. Great caster, um, tons of energy, very Canadian in case you weren't aware, love him to death. Um, not saying that's a negative at all. Um, he's a great guy. And so I wish him the best of luck, but no favoritism here, uh, because I want to, if, if there were favoritism involved, that would mean that we would be seeing some impartial, or I'm sorry, some partiality, not impartiality. And we strive for impartiality here at, uh, here at the very least in the NECC talent booth. So, um, <laughs> I did not know that, dear broadcaster, getting some information. Uh, hopefully, we can ask Lars about what has uh, <laughs> we, we can we get we can ask Lars about uh, what kept him up um, once once we get ready here or uh, once we get tossed into the game. Um, ladies and gentlemen, how has your evening been so far? Um, as I understand it, we had a bit of a uh, a bit of a spicy day. Oh. I got shifted over. We may be set. Hello. Waiting for my buddy's camera to turn. Okay, we're going to deal with a, a gray square for right now. But um, so far, I've I've been told that we have been, we have dealt with a relatively dramatic evening so far. And uh, I think I can ask my co-caster, Lars Newt, about what he may expect for this coming matchup. Lars, are you there? I, I am here. Unfortunately, yes. um, I live alone and I have two dogs and sometimes they have <laughs> their own schedule and their schedule, unfortunately, has a nasty habit of trumping my schedule. But I, the only <laughs> oh, thing no. I have to add, I think you've done a pretty good job of covering it so far, is close matchup. I, I, I don't know what else there is to say. We're at the championship. This is where you get the best of the best. This is where yeah. you get the cream of the crop. So if you don't have a close-up matchup, then something's gone terribly, terribly wrong. <laughs> but I have absolute faith that it hasn't, and I'm just so excited to get rocking and rolling and on our way. Um, I want to ask. I want to ask your thoughts about this now that we can we can go over some stats real quick. Um, they both swept their uh their what should we call it their their semifinal opponents, and against each other they went one and one. Uh in league play um have you had much experience casting either of these teams do you know any standout names other than vitaly unless you want to cover him a little bit but um <laughs> other than the fact that he's canadian again a highlight highlight aspect of of his play style actually no i have not had the opportunity okay. to see this actually all the, the champions that we've cast or that i've had the opportunity to cast has always been west so i'm really excited to find it to finally get the opportunity to get into the east here for champions division and i mean we, we, i know you already covered it we we know vitaly we have a somewhat of a relationship with vitaly <laughs> obviously there is that connection there but outside of that like i said this is kind of fresh for me as a caster seeing these east teams I, i'm looking at their majors and there's some you know, there's a lot for me to be excited about there as an engineer as a welder we've got two majors in here on the side of durham that are welding engineering so uh, come on you got vitaly you got welding engineering i don't want to i don't want to bring any caster bias into this but durham's looking kind of good in my eyes right now <laughs> are you a welder I, I didn't know that I, as a hobby, as a hobby, I used to do a it. hobby. Oh know. my God. I I'm just melt here. metal together. That's fine. Right, as right. a hobby on the side. Oh Lordy. Okay. All right. Well, um, as we work to get our coast cast, blah, 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 easy for me to say, as we work to get our co-caster into this gosh, darn lobby, uh, which I believe he's in, which means we can kick off very, very shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, um, Lars game seven, because I'm, I'm doing two thumbs way, way up for uh, for Game 7 right now. Absolutely. Game, I, if we don't see a Game 7, it's a crying, crying shame. I've seen so many so many overtimes. I know you mentioned earlier some of the South American Grand Series stuff. Over the weekend, I think we saw like 
seven overtimes in like 10 matches. <laughs> so yeah. we don't see some more of that here. I have absolute faith that we can see that here. These are, as we could harp on again and again and again, the best teams in the East Division. They've duked it out. They're one and one with each other. These are even teams. These are well-matched teams, and these are highly talented, highly motivated teams. This is going to be a slugfest all the way through. A slugfest that uh, hopefully will get started soon. We're hearing the crowd noise around us. I wish you guys could hear that, too. It's just the ambiance that I'm looking for <laughs> that you guys can't get. So we have to provide it to you. Um, I believe we're, we're working out just some background uh, personal stream things uh, going on for each of these schools. But um, Lars, uh, how was the dog walk? Like yeah, I'm said, asking you about I it have, for real. I have, I have, I have a husky. If he wants to make an appearance, Atlas. Come here, oh, puppy! Oh, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get Booger. But uh, we'll get. Come on, guys. Booger. Let's go. But uh, they, we'll get. Come on, guys. You know anything about huskies? But uh, they're they're we'll get. You know anything really about huskies? But uh, yes. he can push his oh. brother out of the way. <laughs> come back the other He's way. like, nah, nah, nah. My time in the, he, in the spotlight. He was not ready to come back inside. <laughs> I also, you know, obviously, I had to take a couple extra seconds to make sure I just look better than Leechy here. Um, <laughs> I have a cat, and he's very well behaved. I don't know where he is. <laughs> funny, funny enough, you know, the look better. I wasn't intending, so this is actually French cuff. I actually have flamingos because it was all I had on hand was Flamingo. the French wow. cuff, and then flamingo cufflinks that are actually a gift for somebody else. But it's what I had. So. <laughs> Oh, Listen, boy. you work, you you play the hand you're dealt, and you are playing like an absolute uh, poker master right now. So we we'll do what we that can. One. What yeah. We have. <laughs> um, are we going to be seeing any uh, Eye of Newt action tonight, or was this a little bit too uh, too scrambled to get that prepared? I I don't think we will. I will ah. I will maybe in the background. Maybe we'll try to sneak a little bit in okay. here, but there will definitely right. be no telestration. Maybe a little bit Eye of Newt. We'll see. Actually, I think we actually just rolled an update to SOS plugins, so I don't think it oh. works anymore because oh, no. I haven't bothered to update it. But I don't know. We'll see. Only way that we find out is that if we play some of these games and if it happens to make an appearance, then it makes an appearance. I would love to bring that on screen and bring a little bit of extra in-depth analysis. But I know, hey, Leachy, you and I, we've been around the block once or twice. We have been able to figure out kind of what, what's the what's the term the kids are saying these days? Suss out what's going on on Ugh. the field. With and without technology, regardless of how you feel about the terminology, I think we could figure out what's happening. Yeah, I wouldn't be so sure. I had a, <laughs> I had a very slow day at work today, so my brain is just like moving at two miles an hour. Um, my entire cast yesterday focused on um, my favorite types of spaghetti and how quickly whales can swim, which, by the way, is not as fast as I thought. I like I stuck to my guns yesterday. I was like <laughs> I was like all about how quickly like whales are just going to like outrun humanity. The fastest whale can only swim at 23 miles an hour, which is like which is supremely disappointing to find out between ad breaks. Um but like any tr like any true uh, like any person who's who's true in his conviction, I stuck to it. Um so <laughs> well, I can't to be fair to be wow. fair, 23 miles an hour is still considerably faster than any human can swim. I don't know if you've ever yeah. been to like a swim race, and they look fast <laughs> when they're in the water, and then you walk along the side of the pool, and it's like, oh, but actually... <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I, I could mean, walk... You're like, I could walk faster than you while eating a donut. Yeah, so... I mean, to be fair, they're in significantly better shape because swimming is incredible <laughs> exercise, and it's yeah. a huge challenge, and they literally blow you out of the water but if you get a pool you get land right there and like you said donuts you don't get donuts in the pools <laughs> now i'm hungry now i'm talking about donuts again uh, or again rather now i'm talking about donuts dear lord i have never been happier to see the words join up appear on my screen <laughs> ladies and gentlemen game one right in front of your very eyes it is durham it is st Clair. they are playing against each other it is a best of seven and we are getting this series underway durham in blue volts vitali and drew's clues going up against the st Clair trio of kamal Gurashi and endeavor 20 seconds gone and i want more to be gone 
because I want, I, I just realized how hungry I am, but we, will, we won't dwell on that fact for too long. Drew's clues rotating in, getting the touch high off the ceiling. Vitaly will do the same, but horizontally, Gorachi will sneak this past the Durham defenders, one nothing to St. Clair. Durham started off this game so hot. They brought so much pressure down on St. Clair's net, but this one quick turn, Vitaly just is not able to get back to that, that one. Quite in time, there's a little physical play involved there as well. And Leachy, you know I love the physical play. I'm a big fan too. We can both like the same things. It's fine. <laughs> it doesn't happen too often. So when you see a team implement it properly, it makes me all the more happy. Oh, Vitaly being removed from this field. Garashi has an open shot for goal number two. St. Clair, two for two on opening up that net with first a little bit of a, just a nice little bump, and now a much larger one, removing Vitaly from the field and giving a wide open net. And that really speaks to why that physical play is so effective and why I want to see more of it. A lot of teams wait until game two, game three of a series to start saying, hey, maybe we should get a demo over here too. We're less than a minute in so far, and St. Clair is really hammering home that physical play style. Vitaly trying to carry this one, but gets sent completely across to the other side of the field. Endeavor. Decent catch, but does seed possession. Zero boost. A difficult one to commit for. And Garashi kind of had the ball taken away from him. Volts off this side wall trying to attack this one. Does quite well off the inside of the far post. And Vitaly will make this count. Durham are back within one. You said Vitaly a lot here so far. Volts gets that pass, that dunk off there. And then Kamal just doesn't quite find the touch. Awkward read off the post allows Vitaly to finish this one off. We're getting a little bit of redemption for that first goal. One to two, Durham versus St. Clair. We knew it was going to be close. So far is not disappointed. Oh, the squishy save from Kamal wasn't needed because Garashi stood up tall. Screws clues. Decent catch. Vitaly was looking for a bump, but landed a tad too awkward to have enough momentum to make it count. Screws clues off the sidewalk. Endure, Endeavor, excuse me, over to Vitaly, who will head up the wall, but he has the ball taken away by Garashi. Oh, teammate to work with? No, Garashi, was, I think, was looking for the physical play and will get punished for it because Vitaly takes advantage of the fact that nobody was back. Oh, this is a great little turn here. Vitaly just so quick to get back in this one. Endeavor a little bit behind them, and they can't quite find that U-turn quite as quickly. Able to put that one away with a Thor. But we are less than two minutes gone in game one of this best of seven, and it's already a heater. Mathematicians will tell you that that's a goal on average every 30 seconds. And I would tend to agree because I'm not. Mathematicians are needed yes. to figure out that math because, as you know, <laughs> caster math is, is not the strongest. Nah, -uh, nah. -uh. I have, I have a mathematician just screaming in my ear every 10 seconds, like stats that he needs me to, to talk about. Vitaly, the half flip, keeping it in St. Clair's corner. I'm all trying to see it clear. Garashi, over to Vitaly, who's looking for a second tap on this one. Off the backboard, Drew's Clues will send it out to the left, and we'll see possession now. To St. Clair, Kamal, a long tap. That one actually was on target. A deceptive angle there was eventually dropping down towards goal, and the threat isn't over quite yet. Drew's Clues is up off the side wall. Vitaly can't send it past Kamal. Bolts will give it his his uh, attempt here. The demo from Vitaly opening things up temporarily. The Karashi up to that halfway line. Endeavor up towards the open side of the field. It's not a target. Needs to rely on a teammate to make some kind of a final effort. Rashi kind of sort of on target, but a little bit too high. The thing I'm seeing here out of St. Clair is they struggled a little bit to keep this ball contained, as they're demonstrating right now, but for the most part, have struggled a little bit to keep the ball contained in the offensive end and get that repeat pressure that you know that I love to see. Get that ball downfield, get a shot on net, and then get another and another, and hey, here's another, and hey, I heard you like shots on net, so here's <laughs> another. It's a great way to open up the net, but right now we've got... 11 shots out of Durham to four from St. Clair. Scoreline aside, this is the Durham show. Drew's clues. Pass off that uh, corner wall, but fairly easily seen clear. Clear by St. Clair. Clear by Clair. So many times I say that tonight. Garashi over to Vitaly. Confident catch. 
and sees it past two. In fact, Volts now will take over. Drew's clue coming in. Oh, a third player. Crucial stop there by the St. Clair offender. Now, not quite over the top of it. Well, it was over the top of Endeavor, but only because Garashi called him off. Vitaly, backboard pass. Drew's clues was up, but gets sent away by an excellent read by a St. Clair defender. Big fan of that kind of play style. Final 30 seconds. We're still tied up. Garashi. High off that backboard. Kamal will catch this one. Still has the ability to pass it out. He will get a decent one, but Volts was strong at that near post to see it clear. Endeavor off the back wall. Zero boost. So Volts will look for the clearance. Dangerous shot there from Garashi. Tally flipping over to that right side. We'll get demoed. Endeavor with a shot on target. It's slightly high. And Drew's clues will see this out to the uh, his left side, technically. But Tally down the field. Endeavor will drop it down. Lars, overtime in game one. We may be in for a very long night. Is the caster cursed or caster blessing? We talked about this <laughs> as we got started. As we expect this to be a close one. We've seen tons of overtimes in the past, recent past. That is, and now right off the bat, we've got an even matchup, kind of two big, big differences in the play styles here. As there's one off the backboard, Garashi finishes this one in favor of St. Clair. 16 seconds in overtime. Boo! I wanted this to take longer. That was a nice <laughs> shot, though. That was a very good one. Just immediately up towards that ball, read it as quickly as humanly possible. St. Clair, take game number one. Uh, Lars. I don't think that means a dang thing. Um, I think St. Clair and Durham uh, have it all to play for. However, okay, I'm glad that the numbers popped up in front of my stupid face because look at this. Durham, one save. Read and weep, ladies and gentlemen, one save. St. Clair had nine. And and the Durham had a an exhausting shot total of what is that thirteen to only six from St Clair. Indicative to me, again, I'm the small brain play by play guy, but <laughs> St Clair doing an excellent job of soaking up the pressure from Durham like NECC sponges. I mean, it's it's a terrifying play style because you're dealing with all these shots coming in time and time again, but. Clearly, they're capable. Yeah, I alluded to it earlier as we got towards to, close to the end of this game as we're seeing two hugely different play styles develop here. You have St. Clair, who is much more of a defensively-minded team, putting up that big wall. And like you said, soaking up huge amounts of pressure on the side of Durham, where Durham has been extremely aggressive on offense, putting lots of shots on, but not as effective as they need to be. And on the flip side relatively easy goals for St. Clair. They need to find a way to shore up that defense and score on the multitude of opportunities they're developing in the offensive end. Game two underway. One of those four win ticks, crucial win ticks going to St. Clair. Kamal. Ooh, okay. We'll pop over. Endeavor will get a decent 50. Garashi into the corner. Is up. Decent touch, but Volts a decent enough touch for himself to send it away. Kamal, uh, bouncing. Durham were able to take their time on that one. And now, building up some kind of a counterattack. Drew's clues off this back wall. Volts will charge. Vitaly oh, was waiting on the edge of the, uh, the box there. Unfortunately for him, St. Clair are very capable defenders. So they will see the ball uh, to safety as far as they're concerned. Minute gone, 0-0. Very capable defenders, but if you allow a team to shoot enough times, they're going to find the back of the net. It does not matter who is defending that net. It could be the best defense in the world with enough shots on net. Sooner or later, they will crack. The key right now for St. Clair is to not allow Durham to continue this offensive pressure. You're allowing them to get time to figure out what works and what doesn't. So far, they haven't had a lot of success in finding out what works, but they're getting plenty of opportunities to figure out and try to crack that code to get that last little touch into the net. Volts gets a decent win. Oh, and that 50 in the corner. A crucial 50 win. I smell a Lars Newt 50 compliment coming. <laughs> well, you know what I think is the single most important mechanic no, when I it don't. comes to winning championships, and that Enlighten is the ability me. 
to 50. 50 50s are so huge. And now Volts, having done that twice to pick up a goal here, get that pass to center for Vitaly to score on these big 50s into the front of the net. If you are St. Clair, you have to figure out how to win these 50s. Look at that bump play to clear it away for Volts as Drew's clues. They will continue this offensive pressure, finally cleared away by a double commit. And that's what it takes, apparently, right now for St. Clair to win 50s on this Durham team is to send two players for every one Durham. Kamal. Oh, let this bounce. The tally charging on this one. I think actually got the reset, but chose not to use it. Drew's clues. Dangerous shot. Kamal up nice and high to see this one clear. Temporary double commit there on the part of St. Clair. But they will see this one wide. The tally. Calculating, measuring the exact op uh, perfect time. Why are you kidding me? <laughs> Drops this down the full around the world on this ball. Turns into the most gorgeous of passes. Oh, wow. That's just so well read. And the bait on Kamal to get them to commit to that challenge off the wall. You know they were thinking that Vitaly was going to the net on that one. This Vitaly Volt combo is deadly and kind of like I said you've given Durham tons of time and offense to figure out what works and they found what works Matt should be good at this game I wonder what that feels <laughs> could, like could not be me <laughs> couldn't be me either oh come on zero boost sending it goalward oh decent 50 there as well below Drew's clues zero boost who will try to nah, not successfully chase after this one volts just needs to direct it goalwards but chooses to pass it high off of that backboard May have been better suited to shoot it on target, but what do I know? I'm just the caster. Kamal, over to Garashi. It's a demo on Drew's clues. Temporary man advantage for St. Clair. Kamal. Can't do it by himself. Drew's clues standing up tall. Oh, Vitaly slightly wide, and Kamal will pop this up for a self-clearance. Drew's clues across the right side of the pitch. Garashi will stop that passing opportunity before it has a chance to develop. Bolts. Can't get that bump there. Laura's right. Your favorite point of this mark, or <laughs> favorite point of every match is that 90-second mark. Durham holding on to the two-goal lead. Two goals, not quite as much as I would like to see because, as you know, two goals becomes a one-goal lead very, very quickly, and a one-goal lead just isn't secure. It might as well. Well, I shouldn't say might as well, but it's, it's close enough to zero. I'd like to see three. Three goals is where you really, really have that advantage, that room to breathe. And I do have to ask, as the clock ticks off here, is that Kamal also using an alpha boost? Uh, no. Some Someone in chat could call me an idiot. I don't think so. I don't hear it. It doesn't sound like an alpha. Oh, I know Vitaly is. All right, whatever. We'll talk about this later. <laughs> he, he might be. Fultz. Oh, great 50 for St. Clair. Vitaly needs to jump up super high to get this one clear. Drew's clues, awkward situation, but manages to pinch it down. Keep the momentum going in favor of Durham. Endeavor. Oh, hands out Ooh. one to Volts. It's off the inside of the post. Almost made it three. Almost gave you that exact lead you were looking for, but no off the crossbar. The save, it's bouncing on the line. Okay, come on, we'll make this one count. 17 seconds, St. Clair are within touching distance. A a uh, blah, 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 bringing game number two back. Oh my goodness, Vitaly with an enormous save on the goal line, but it just throws everybody out of commission. It puts everybody in an awkward spot, and it's going to be St. Clair to clean it up before they can get it clear. So close, but so far to getting that one free. And now with 10 seconds remaining, a double demo with a big opportunity, but Drew's Clues has a huge challenge, avoids the physical play to get that one clear. Ball loose in the corner, clock ticking down through the final seconds, and Durham looks to have this one under control. One last opportunity, but Vitaly puts that one down. We are one to one in this series. <clears throat> oh, it's going to be a long night. Ooh, it's going to be a long <laughs> night. I love it. Ooh. One, one Durham also allegedly uh, Kamal is using a yellow standard boost. Vitaly's the only one using an alpha boost. Thank you, Golden31902. Um, the, the first 31,901 were taken. Um, Durham, oh uh, making the shots count a lot more than game one. I mean, St. Clair were firing all, on all cylinders defensively in game one, but you can't deny that, uh, that Durham was... A, a little bit more efficient with their shooting. Yes, they still only managed two goals, but maybe it was that they cleaned up the defense a little bit more. Who knows?
they they did a little bit better on defense. They held St. Clair to that same five shots on net. I think actually it's one less than they had in game number one here. They a little fewer shots on net themselves, but like you said, just a little more efficient in how they did that. It put St. Clair on the back foot and made them feel just a little bit uncomfortable for a lot of this game. They just didn't have an answer for whatever Durham had going on. And yes, Durham, not quite as many goals as maybe you would have liked to have seen for that level of pressure. But at the end of the day, they prevent St. Clair from getting any real effort down the other way. Game three is upon us, and we need to see if this is a game plan that, uh, well, that honestly either of these teams can keep up with. It does take a ton of focus. Ton of concentration, ton of dedication to implement those game plans and, and make them work for the entire length of a series. And that's just for a best of five, let alone a best of seven in a grand finals. But you could probably argue that these teams oh, want to save from Vitaly. You could probably argue that these teams are in the grand finals for a reason. So far be it for me to uh, to suggest that they aren't capable of it. What a pass from Vitaly. But uh, unfortunate, Volts couldn't quite see that one on target. Well, so far, we talked, <clears throat> excuse me, we talked a little bit about as we look like we may be getting a restart here on the match for server issues. And Lichi got to call you out a little bit. You said, there's no way, there's no way that we're going to get any kind of server issues. We're going to be able to just sit in the same lobby. We don't have to worry about it. But as the players leave this match, we will be looking for a server reset to try to get this one back underway uh quick context on the alpha boost comment for those for those of you that do not know alpha boost was only available to people that were in the closed alpha of this game and have since become quite the rare commodity and the value of them has skyrocketed i think the last time i checked eight thousand dollars for alpha boost Vitaly out here what? representing that eight thousand dollars i knew they were expensive but i, oh I happen God. to know that's not what vitaly paid for it he paid last sure. it's an investment at this point it's an investment but oh it is absurd because it's such a commodity it's such a small thing but that's why it's of significance to us here and why it's something worth questioning but you mentioned earlier can we see these strategies hold out throughout the entire series and i'm gonna go with no no we can't part of the reason these players are here at this level they're this effective is because of their ability to adapt and overcome to see what their opponents are doing adapt to it and then find a way to overcome that and push the ball back into their opponent's net right now it's one thing to be able to say hey we've got something that works and if it's still working keep doing it but just be very ready to jump to the next thing as soon as it stops working um would like to say it was our uh, doofus broadcaster that said we could just sit in the same one. I was the one that went with the <laughs> contingency plan, and guess what? You are right. Here this we are. True. So, meh, meh, meh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm five years old, hmm. so you times infinity. Um, <laughs> we're waiting. We're waiting for the. T <laughs> oh my god. Oh, on TV, on TV. Snap out of it. Um, it we are. <laughs> it, yes, it is, and and I will accept that. Um, uh, waiting for the teams to join up. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I think one of one of their someone on Durham was having issues actually seeing. Maybe they had some kind of a black screen issue. So, in the interest of fairness, that call for a reset did happen before the goal. I you guys probably saw at least two players completely stopped playing. Um, so that is one of the things that makes it count. And it happened before the 32nd mark in the match. So totally legal to get the restart. It looks like we've got the players in here and, uh, we are awaiting the kickoff of game three at any minute. Um, Lars, we were talking about whether we think that, uh, the game plans can last the whole series. I would tend to agree with you. Um, I don't, I, ha, huh, I don't think they can. I think they will try their hardest um, to make it last, but I I think you're right. I think eventually um, the uh, the the wear and tear, mental wear and tear, is going to get to you. And uh, as as I expect this series to go to Game Seven, I think they are going to have to definitely strip things down uh, to the bare you know basics of Rocket League and just rely on pure like out and out speed. Out and out speed. Well, I, I caution that. I'm going to throw back hmm, to the thing okay. that 
that we saw over the weekend with the South American RLCS Grand Series, which is we had a race, which is an up and coming team down in South America, find their way all the way to the Grand Finals versus Furia, who is one of the top two teams in the region. They had lost to Furia earlier in the day, but they had beaten True Neutral, the number one team in South America, with a strategy of all out speed and aggression. They just fly to the ball so fast. They're so aggressive. But at the end of the day, they came up against Furia, a team that does everything well. Whatever you can do, they can match it and add in a little bit of spice to turn it back on its head. And they just couldn't use that strategy of speed and aggression to overcome a team that can adapt. That being said, speed and aggression can be very effective at throwing people's rotations off, getting them uncomfortable, not giving them room to breathe to make the plays they want. If you don't have a team that can adapt to that kind of play style, then absolutely go for it. Get up in your opponent's face. I will always, always, always advocate not giving your opponent an ounce of breathing room. It, yes, but I feel like then you also need to be really careful that you're not putting yourself too out of position with that, you know, the the fast play and the aggressive play. And maybe I sound like I'm contradicting myself, but I feel like I'm just trying to, to I don't know, not not flip flop, but I'm trying to 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 find what See my true angles. opinion is here. Get all the, angles. Get all the information. <laughs> Give Thank everybody you. a fair take into what works and what doesn't. I get you, E.G. You're just <sighs> you're not you're not. You're not of weak spine. You're just you're just trying to make sure everybody's included. <laughs> I'm a mediator. That's that's what I I know. I tell I very often tell people they shouldn't be lawyers. You should be a lawyer. That was very good. Um, okay, <laughs> still working out some details in the background. But um, Saint, I almost said Saint Saint Durham Saint <laughs> Saint Clair. Versus Durham, uh, game three, we're just waiting for these players to hop onto the field, working out some uh, some back back end rules. Um, uh, don't really know where to go from here. I've got uh, it. I, I, okay, I can, let please, me, please. Let me, let me take over for you here. This the is answer, why you're a professional. So we talked about how speed and aggression can be effective and how it can win games. The answer to that is that ability to vary speed, that ability to get that fast and then throw on the brakes. It will be interesting to see as time goes on. Best of seven. I expect to see all seven. We got five minutes on the clock of game number two. We are underway. Get a, game number three. Game number three. Wow. You just you can only be right for so long, you know? I call conspiracy. I think our producer started the game exactly the moment after he saw that I was floundering for content just to <laughs> just to make Leechy look bad. And I, I I'm sticking to my guns on that one. Game three. Durham in blue, St. Clair. I don't accept your apology in the background. Durham in blue, St. Clair in orange. Let's get this going. 30 seconds gone. Oh, Kamal! Slightly high off of that crossbar. And Deborah couldn't find the follow up, so Vitaly will charge out. Decent 50. Beating Garashi. Vitaly ready for this to come down onto his nose and pops this vaguely towards target. Kamal. Out to the right side. Not the worst play either. Knew that the ball really wasn't going to develop into anything useful if the momentum was continued straight forward. So you might as well just knock it to the side and see if you can't get a passing play going. And I feel like that's a an under, underutilized strategy. Maybe in the lower ranks, I, I feel like maybe it's a, expected up here in the champions ranks. But listen, the ball doesn't always need to go forwards. If it's very clear that you're just going to be running into a brick wall, Take it backwards. Take it to the side. Try something new. What a flip reset from Endeavor and uses it to full. Well, actually uses the fact that he got one to full advantage, but never wound up using the actual reset. This is why I love the flip reset shot and using it as a pass as well is also extremely effective and a ton of fun to watch. But it's why I love it is because it gives you options. And especially you can see Vitaly coming off that side wall off the side wall. You have to commit to an altitude as Drew's Clues almost gets one here. You have to commit to an altitude. You have to pick where you're going to cross the front of the net, and Endeavor takes advantage of that fact. They say if Vitaly goes low, I can hit this flip reset. If they go high, I can just keep this one low. It's hugely effective. It's the mind games you need to play at this kind of level. In the corner, Drew's Clues with a flick opportunity. Won't beat the first man in the form of Garashi. Open shot opportunity. Almost gets the dunk on target as well. Come on, coming in. That one is on target. 2-0 to St. Clair.
And you can find the corner like that. You are absolutely deadly. Volt tries to get that one clear. Garashi follows through to dunk that one down to the middle. Leaves Vitaly all by their lonesome with an entire net to defend. And it's hard to remember how big that net is until you see it from that third person. You're not actually sitting in defending. It's very difficult to cover the entire thing. And Garashi proving why you follow through on every single touch. Endeavor also at the last minute backflipped out of the way to make sure that his uh, uh, partner shot went on target. Volts ensuring this one goes on target with a beautiful pass over to Vitaly coming off the wall. It's just absolutely flawless. What a shot. Wow. Uh, this Volts Vitaly combination is deadly. I like to see what Durham College is bringing to this team. Volts with an open opportunity gets the flick, but it's a little bit too high. They can't find a way to turn this one, tie this one back up just yet but as i was saying durham college almost gets beat in the back end but it goes wide as all three players on the side of st Clair don't find the touch it's a quick turnaround volts off the pass from vitaly ties this one up what do you know it's even what a pop over there from vitaly volts just beautifully positioned no one was there so this one is probably as free of a goal as you're gonna get at this skill level and uh yeah does super well with it. Half time, it's 2-2. Stop me if you heard this one before. Oh, come on! Volts had stopped, fully stopped moving because he thought that was a guaranteed goal, as did I, and it just didn't play out that way. Interesting that Sinclair couldn't find the target there, maybe feeling a little bit of uh, unnecessary pressure. What a bump there from Volts. Vitaly couldn't score, and now Kamal has a free shot, but gets demoed by Vitaly as he rushes back just in time lights out rocket league here there's still two minutes left it is a track meet up and down the field back and forth one-off opportunities met by a quick transition back the other way for its own one-off opportunity garashi waits Ooh. back to the back post is able to touch that one away but the pressure continues drew's clues just puts that one wide on a huge passing opportunity from vitaly i was trying to say before we got interrupted by action action and more action the things that Durham college are doing well is this Vitaly Volt's co connection is so consistent and they so love to get it back and forth. Another opportunity and Drew's clues and the defensive end so quick to challenge, so quick to get in the face of St. Clair makes it suffocating to play against. A very dangerous combination. Great pass from Vitaly to Drew's clues who did wind up getting that final touch. Dever will see this one out halfway up the pitch. Clues up high. Kamal, decent uh, 50 there. Vitaly, now Volts on the right side of the box. Good 50. Kamal will have to chase this back into his own corner. Clears it mid. Dangerous, especially when Vitaly is the one jumping up to take advantage of that uh, slight missed touch. Oh, using the ramp. Volts knew, was it, knew that the ball was going to roll out to him. Just couldn't find that final shot past the defenders down yet again. Endeavor over the top of him. Drew's clues for Durham looking to build this attack, but Endeavor stops the momentum and actually sends it back down the other way. Volts straight into Endeavor. Ooh, missed clear. Vitaly needs to handle this carefully. Flip reset. Doesn't use it. Hands it to uh, a teammate there. Drew's clues. Out of the corner wall. Taking closer and closer to overtime, lest St. Clair can change that fact. That one is on target. Drew's Clues, crucial save on the goal line. It's not done quite yet. Endeavor wants this one to be ended in regulation. Drew's Clues will bring it down overtime in game number three. Very smart, <clears throat> excuse me, very smart play out of Drew's Clues there to play that one down. They were on the back foot. They were scrambled on defense. They didn't have a great opportunity as Vitaly fixed that one low and almost finds a way to make the connection to end this one early in overtime yet again, but it's just touched away. I'm saying Drew's Clues taking advantage of awareness of the field and the positioning. On the other side of the ball, though, right now the deadly combo, the physical play is just so excellent out of St. Clair. It's very tough to play a team that can manage position and rotation so well to use physical play and not be out of position. Kamal, ooh, dangerous pinch on that top ramp there. Almost fell beautifully down for Durham to take advantage. But we'll get the clear eventually. Vitaly over to Volts, drops it down. It was never in doubt with that pass, the slightest of touch. 
hands game three Durham's way. I love this communication here. You can see Bolt's coming up. Do I back pass? Nope. Vitaly says, nope, you go to net. I will get you that ball. And that he does. That is touch easily in for Durham. They find a way to take the lead in the series after dropping game number one. And shocker, shocker, it comes on yet another Vitaly Volts combination. Yeah, weird how that works. It's like the good players continue to be good. <laughs> Drew's clues. Rocking that season 11 grand champion, one of the OGs around here. Um, wow, I'm I'm looking now at the numbers, and there's not too much to separate these two teams. Uh, shot total wasn't too far off. Save total was identical. Uh, only difference was Durham shot a couple more times, and uh, Durham scored one more goal. And that's exactly what we've been consistently talking about, Lars. If you outshoot your opponent, the the stats lean towards probably giving you the win. Probably. Probably. No guarantee. We've seen craziness. I mean, even game number one was Durham putting tons and tons of shots on net, but St. Clair using that physical play to find a way to take advantage of it. And that's something Durham... It's an interesting distribution of skills. You've got Drew's Clue that is fast, that is diving on these balls and is so aggressive. Then you have Vitaly, obviously, huge mechanics, great control, and Volts slotting in right in between. But then on the other side of the ball, you have St. Clair, who has a very even skill distribution, and it makes them a solid, consistent team. And one of the things I say, always wins championships is consistency. We'll see if this kind of hodgepodge of skill on the side of Durham College is able to beat a consistent nickel three-man squad on the side of St. Clair. Can't wait to see it play out. Game four underway. Barashi. Powerful shot, but relatively simple save for Bolts in the end. Oh, patient play. will go for this all by himself, but Garashi standing up tall to keep this one out. Drew's clues can't sink this one under the post. Doesn't need to, going for the physical play, but the shot never came in. Nothing to take advantage of there. Ball in the corner. Seen out by St. Clair. Kamal, straight down the field. They're going to get this one for free. one nothing to St. Clair, courtesy of Kamal. Unfortunate for Durham College, but it happens. Kamal is able to find a way to send this one all the way downfield, and it's an important lesson when it comes to Rocket League is center passes work both ways it doesn't matter where on the field you are that went all the way down on st Clair's goal line and they find a way to turn it into a goal endeavor for the pass vitaly confident clearance Ooh, kamal dicey touch there vitaly will take it away 3v2 in favor of durham vitaly shot on target kamal decent save vaults will send it back mid yet again but drusku's can't get there in time Rashi taking it away from Drew Schools. Vitaly, great low shot there. Drew takes it away from Volts off of the underside of the crossbar. This one's off of the backboard. Drew's Clues will get the demo, or will receive the demo, rather. Drew patiently catching this one. 90 seconds gone, Lars. I still don't think there's too much to separate these two teams. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, absolutely. These are even teams. We saw... I don't want to call it a freak goal, but just a, a endeavor. Well positioned at the top of the box there and finds a way to put it at the top of the net as Vitaly makes a kind of an awkward clear and allows that one to just drive right home. Well placed as well. Volt's unfortunate situation to be in had zero boost to get there. So just needed to wait until the last possible second to get up there. And you can't quite cover the entire frame of the goal with zero boost. So unfortunate, St. Clair now take this two goal lead. And this is probably one of the, uh, <laughs> I mean, a two goal lead in a series that that's this close, I would say is simultaneously confident because all of these games have ended by one goal. And at the same time, not confident at all because there's still over half of this game left. Durham could could swing this completely back in their favor. You feel like it's only a matter of time. All these games have ended within one goal, and they've all had a 2-0 scoreline, but Volt is able to bring this within one goal like we talked about. Funny how that happens. Is this a caster's blessing? Does that count? Depends on who you root for. I get, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very, 
very true. I will keep my mouth <laughs> shut and just say 2-1 St. Clair still holding this lead. Durham able to pull one back. Bruce Clues. Massive backward pass. Everyone in St. Clair trying to reorganize themselves on the defensive rotation. Great touch there by Kamal. This one's on target. Vitaly will send it into the corner. And actually effectively beats one as well. This one's open if Volts can get some power on it. Even more open now that Vitaly got the touch but is bouncing on the goal line. Drew's Clues will see this one in. Well, we talked about how St. Clair gets everybody involved. This is a way to do it. Vitaly with the demo. Volts with the double touch to the goal line. And Drew's Clues, like we've talked about, diving in to be that cleanup savior. Two to two, over two minutes remaining. We are not done with the scoring in game number four. Vitaly, oh, trying to do something real fancy. It's like a solo dribble dunk play in midair. Didn't quite work out for him. Drew, ball taken away from him. Barashi, decent mid pass. Volts will get this one clear, only as far as Kamal. Super high, has a flip to work with, but Drew excellently done pre-jump that knew that the player was probably going to go for something slow so just got to the ball in time to see it clear from danger the tally pass garashi not pass endeavor but endeavor couldn't squeeze it inside of that right side post scoreline still 2-2 two -two. volts kind of heels planted on the ground will finally get this one clear and now durham will look to build some kind of an attack here don't think it'll last too long as Endeavor is looking to clear this one out from his own field. Garashi stuck on the ground yet again. This is the clearance and Vitaly will take advantage. I had a lot to say about Vitaly a second ago, but here with the thing we're going to note is this passing play. Drew's clues to Volts to Vitaly off that back wall. I love that back wall because it does exactly what you just saw there. You attack it enough and eventually you draw those defenders away from the front of the net and give it just wide open to that last attacker. And now Durham College has the lead. Oh, super dangerous. Durham could make it four. Oh, no. no, that is technically an own goal. Vitaly will get credit for this, but you do not ever want to see touches like that. Ah, Volts. I think it was an unintentional touch back out. They wanted that one to sit in front of the net, but it works to their advantage as that last returning defender wasn't expecting it to be thrown right at them. Vitaly secures, but Volts really responsible for making sure that happens. A 4-2 lead for Durham. This, now, we're at the stage of a game where a two-goal lead in as close of a series as this has been is actually quite confident because now the opposing team has about 30 seconds to do anything about it. What an interesting pass from Endeavor and a great save from Vitaly as well. Both of these teams showing up tonight. This is the exact level of Rocket League that you, you want to see week to week throughout league play out of uh, out of teams in the champion division. But man, I mean, if if ever a team was going to show up, it is it is right here right now in the grand finals. And Durham sure as heck came to play unless a miracle happens here, which it will not. They will come away with the game four victory. St. Clair's backs are well and truly against the wall from here on out. Yeah, I have, I have bad news, Alici. That last save that wasn't Vitaly. That was Garashi. They had that beautiful opportunity in front of that. And maybe forced a little bit by Vitaly and that presence. And Garashi felt obligated to try to do something to mm -hmm. beat that ball into the net. But they end up doinking it high and throwing it off that backboard. A heartbreaker that would have brought it within one, within just inside grasp to be able to bring this one back. But Durham, like you said, now on match point have St. Clair against the wall and a little bit of breathing room. St. Clair needs to win two in a row to be able to walk away with the grand final victory here. Durham, on the other end, can afford as much as they wouldn't want to to drop a game for some unfortunate circumstance and still be able to come out on top. They can they can afford to drop now that you definitely I, I mean, you don't want to drop one game, but you definitely don't want to drop two games, but they can. And that is the thing about being up this far in a best of seven series. You really have some cushion to work with. And I expect Durham to use it to 
the best of their ability. And I also expect St. Clair to put up a tooth and nails fight um, as we get game number five underway. I tr I would say maybe the momentum is with Durham, but I feel like calling it this early would be a fool's errand. No, we, we have the potential for plenty of Rocket League left to play. We've seen just absolute magic out of St. Clair, but that's not magical. A team bump right there. Perhaps communication starting to dwindle a little bit as the, the elephant in the room starts to make its presence known with this current scoreline and St. Clair feeling the pressure of being down on match point here. Vitaly sends us into the corner. Gets away with that Aaron touch because Kamal couldn't quite read it. Not his fault. Dangerous bounce. Here's clues. Only as far as Kamal, Endeavor, Endeavor will turn, excuse me. Garashi, the only one back on defense. Dangerous spot to be in, but handles it expertly. They're at this level of play for a reason. Drew's clues, waiting for this. Oh, on the ball, it gets bumped out. It's the daylight's bumped out of him. Zero boost as well. Endeavor, interesting backflip pass. I don't think that was the wrong idea. Just had a little bit too much sauce on that ball. Knocked it over his teammate. Just, just uh, under, rather, 90 seconds gone. And uh, <laughs> the slowest game we've seen so far which is crazy because they're getting a good pace back and forth and there's an opportunity just off the crossbar and back out but they're not getting some contained sustained offensive pressure we've seen this ball at most at most one look on the net and then it's right back down to the other end of the field getting good bumps but i want to see some midfield presence i want to see shots on net followed up by a midfield contained some quick challenges some good 50s to not allow these plays to so quickly transition back and forth up and down the field Drew, the pass over to Volts. Just didn't quite have the angle to make that one work. Kamal, zero boost. Not a super confident clear, it's Drew's clues. Oh my word, what a follow up on this touch. That's an unfortunate little touch there. Kamal not quite able to find it, but that recovery from Drew's clues is absolutely beautiful. And I've said it before, I will say it again. That is why you need to follow every single one of your touches. Durham, the Rocket League mastery right now. Endeavor waiting patiently, looking for that low 50. Did win it, but unfortunately for him, Durham won enough time to get teammates back in position. Endeavor, tough situation. Drew will drop this one slowly down and Kamal will see this clear. Over the top of one as well. Temporary advantage positionally for St. Clair. That one is on target. Decent save from Drew. Drew's clues now trying to pinch this one out. Volt hands it to Vitaly to see this one clear. Dropping down very quickly. Volt couldn't get that touch. Drew's clues will. I believe that one is on target. Kamal needs to stand up tall and will get. Drew's clues will let Volts get this touch and Kamal getting a decent 50, but it's not enough to stop the power of Vitaly coming in. Drew's clues, no, the follow-up. Volts will send it wide. One nothing for Durham. It's the only scoring we've seen, but if things don't change, it may be the only scoring that Durham needs to use to put this series in the bag. We've seen a two-goal lead evaporate in no time flat. A one-goal lead, it just doesn't give me that warm, fuzzy feeling that we know how this one's going to end. We've seen players like Kamal and Endeavor, <clears throat> excuse me, and Garashi make just huge plays. Solo plays the offensive end as Kamal barely touches that one down and away. Not the greatest clear, but it will be followed up by Endeavor, who has an opportunity down the field. One-on-one, -on -one, needs one to beat. Look for that bump on Vitaly. Doesn't quite find it. Does get the demo eventually, but it dissolves that offensive opportunity. They couldn't just make it happen. Endeavor showed his hand a little bit too early with that flick. And now Durham looking to punish him for not taking advantage of that chance. 60 seconds. Garashi can't get it past the Durham defender. Endeavor. Oh, a great flip cancel there for Drew's Clues. Getting the speed and able to use the boost as well to get to that ball just in time to see it clear. 40 seconds, counting down. Vitaly may just have sealed this one with this second goal for Durham. It's a good read, taking advantage of the feels flip from Kamal Garashi, just spanning, spamming, 
spawning what? in awkwardly, and Endeavor over rotating, abandoning that back post, leaving two players, or excuse me, all three players out in the corner. Vitaly well placed. I I feel obligated to re revisit Drew's Clues challenge from earlier because it's a brand new way to challenge the ball that I, I've never seen before. I mean, yeah, I feel like... Maybe uh, not the time with 25 seconds remaining on the clock and potentially the end of St. Clair's run, <laughs> but it's, that's the thing that gets me excited about Rocket League. I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. Me too. We can talk about that later. Final 15 seconds. Vitaly coming in. Grashi, strong save. And a great uh, pass over there as well to Endeavor, but Drew's Clues is going to take a nice sharp angle to see this one. Honestly, didn't even need to score, just needs to burn time off of the clock. This one is done and dusted. Kamal will get a fancy touch here for the insurance goal, but it will not matter because Durham are the ones with the lead at the end of game five, and that means Durham are your East Champion Division champions. Honestly, a little bit surprised that we didn't see this one all the way through through game seven, but Durham comes in as the number one seed and they leave as the number one champion in the East Champions Division. What a showing out of these teams. What a play. St. Clair has nothing to hang their head about because they played excellent. It's just Durham came out with a little bit better showing today. And honestly, you take this same matchup on another day and I think we could see this go the other way. 100%. Um, I am super... I'm, I'm happy that Durham was able to take the win. I am a little bit disappointed that... At, at, well, disappointed, but I would actually say more surprised that uh, St. Clair was only able to get one game off of Durham, given how close this entire series was. We only saw five games in it. Um, I mean, it, it was... We were a single game away from a sweep. Uh, it We weren't too, you know, distant from that. Durham, I, I guess just showing that that little extra bit of consistency is is what you need to, to put these championship matches to bed. And I guess they had it, and St. Clair didn't quite. Well, as we get moving on here, we are going to be looking to take a short air break, and then we will be right back. Make sure as we have more Rocket League action coming up for you here tonight. We are not done. We'll be right back after this short intermission. Stick around. What would you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We have our follow-up interview for this East Champions Division. What a match that was. I am Lars Newt, and joining me here instead of Leachy is Jacob Van Ryn. And as we get the players and the coach in, unfortunately, we do not have Volts. Volts had to go to work. I think it's actually a little bit late because they needed to come out here and win this championship. And I think a worthwhile endeavor. Yeah, they were terrific tonight. Congratulations to Durham. Um, I, I thought St. Clair played great, but Durham just a little bit too much tonight. Well, we are joined in the casting booth by Ben, the coach for Durham College, and Drew's Clues and Vitaly. Just right off the bat, I guess I'll start with the coach because we get to see and hear the players a lot. Thoughts, questions, concerns, comments, hopes, and or dreams here on this series. <laughs> I mean, it was awesome to watch them. Great to see them. Uh complete the back-to-back, -back, finish the dream, take both championships from uh, the season. But, I mean, yeah, it was great. We got off to a bit of a slow start in game one. And, I mean, even game two and three, uh, I think we were down 2 nothing at one point in each of those games. So good to see the boys not give up on those ones, pull them back, and then, you know, kind of power through the rest of the series. Yeah, the mental fortitude so very strong with these players and the ability to to take that disadvantaged position and run with it and not let it get to them to be able to consistently come out and do that. So, Vitaly, what are your thoughts on dropping game number one and then playing from behind in a few of these games in the series? I mean, realistically, we we knew that coming into this, St. Clair was a solid team. They took a team. They took a series off of us before, right? Um, coming into this one, it was a different roster, but. Um, we knew that they were going to bring it from the start. There was a couple of iffy things that happened on their part. They probably could have been up a couple more goals in the other games, but we just fought back. We we had to stay strong. Um, and realistically, this is a roster that doesn't play together very often, so we kind of had to figure out ourselves as well rotation-wise. So um, after after we kind of figured it out, we kind of clamped things down, and uh, it we saw how it went from uh, game three and on. Okay, well, that I mean... <laughs> obviously we saw that you guys finally got that rotation down. You got very settled. I want to touch on Drew's clues here real quick. Drew, when you started this series, you were kind of more of a defensive player. You spent a lot more time in the defensive end and to great effect, keeping that ball out of the net. But as time went on, especially into that final game, you started to bring the offense, bring that pressure forward. Was that a shift in how comfortable you were with the rotations and your teammates? Or was that just kind of the natural flow of the game? You say, hey, Fultz, Vitaly, you've had your fun. Now it's my turn. Oh, you know, for sure. Uh, you know, like like uh, Vitaly said, and this isn't a roster that usually plays together. Uh, they gave me the opportunity to play with them. I'm I'm usually the sub for the team. Wildfire is actually um, the, on the main roster. But for this league, they gave me the opportunity to play um, and prove that we can be the best even with our sub. And we did that. Um, so I'm very happy. But yes, I did, uh, that is exactly what happened. I had to play a little bit more of, of a defensive role uh, because I was figuring out what Volt and Vitaly wanted out of me. Uh, and as time went on, um, I was able to get a get a goal here and there, and uh, we figured it out pretty fast uh, in the later games. So, all right. Well, I have one more question here before I throw this one over to Jacob, and I relinquish control of everything I have to say here. And that is Vitaly. Obviously, we talked about you guys having all that offensive fun. Vitaly Volts, that combo was magical. How how often do you guys? just settle on these passing plays and kind of a, a secondary part of that question is what's the comms like especially that last touch revolts coming out of the corner peels off goes to the front of the net and you get that beautiful pass for that last little finish if you happen to remember that specific goal yeah i mean we have like we've been on a team for almost a, almost a year now um this has been a team for a while um and We've always pulled out those little solo plays, those little passing plays you know, out of the corner or whatever. We just kind of know where each other are at some some points in the play on uh, in the field. So, be having the ability to just kind of know where your teammate is, and especially having the faith um, that he does in me, just finding each other on like little plays like that in the offensive zone is is huge as well because it gives me the freedom and the ability to kind of do whatever I want mechanically and kind of throw the ball in front, and he's going to be there to clean it up. So. Um, it's really nice having a teammate like that, just being able to clear everything up that I do. That's really dumb. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate the insight. I'm going to throw it over to Jacob and see if he has any questions, concerns, comments, hopes, and or dreams, and then we will uh, appreciate your time and we'll get on out of here. No, guys, I, we, we've done this before. You're familiar with this. Congratulations. Uh, the first team ever to repeat as NCC champions. We're, we're thrilled and proud of you guys. And no surprise, obviously. Um, thrilled for you and we'll get this up to you as soon as possible but once again congratulations on another NECC title awesome to watch you guys I thought St. Clair was great tonight but certainly you guys were the superior squad 
and we are uh, we're thrilled to present that to you. And congratulations on another NCC title. Thank you so much. Thank we're you excited much. to have the uh, the twin titles next to each other. <laughs> well, we're thrilled to send it up to you, and, and we look forward to next fall certainly as well, guys. Congratulations. Enjoy the evening, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. You as well. Yeah, have a good one. Thank you very much. Being the start of a dynasty. But I would like to say thank you as well to the players for taking the time to A, win, and B, come out here and talk to <laughs> us. That is it for me tonight. But that's not it for NECC and Rocket League action. We've got the West Champions Division, UAH, University of Alabama, Huntsville versus Lincoln Land. That is going to be an absolute banger of a match. Now, that is the side that I am more familiar with, and all of these players are absolutely incredible. Stick around. We will be right back. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. 